Hello everyone and welcome to the McGonagall Boxing Podcast. Let's get straight to it. The fancy fight we all wanted to see that never actually transpired. David Hay, Tyson Fury, 2013. September 2013 was the original date. Then it got pushed back to December 2013. And then finally, it was meant to happen, wasn't it? February 2014. It never went down because of David Hay pulling out multiple times due to shoulder injury, which, to be fair to him, he did post pictures, didn't he, of shoulder surgery, and he did end up having, what was it, two, three years out of the ring because of it. So, it seemed like the injury was legitimate, although Team Fury at the time, Titan Fury, and his trainer, Peter Fury, his uncle, weren't convinced. They believed that in their terms, he'd swallowed, he bottled out the fight, he knew coming up to the fight that Fury was looking good in the build-up, and the nerves got to Hay. What do we believe? Well, it's hearsay, isn't it, really? Um, What I believe is it would have been a very, very interesting fight. Now, don't forget, though, I think people are making the mistake when they kind of refer back now to Hay Fury of the Fury of 2020. If that was the case, Tyson Fury of 2020 under, obviously, his new trainers, especially his cousin Andy Lee, fighting aggressively, active, lean, fit, any hay he would have beaten. I mean, look how Klitschko dealt with hay, a prime hay. I think Fury would have done the same and probably stopped hay late on. However, this was not Tyson Fury of 2020. This was not prime 31-year-old Tyson Fury. This was baby Tyson Fury. Um, 20, what, 23, 24, still very inexperienced. Just had two knockdown wars um, with, at the British level um, with McDonnell. Just had a war with uh, Chisora. Um, 18 months prior to this and don't forget just in his last fight against Steve Cunningham being floored pretty heavily before credit to him coming back and that was a cruiserweight so you can imagine what an explosive prime this is the big thing again people have got the David Hay versus Tony Bellew in their mind this was David Hay prior to it the, them serious shoulder injuries in his prime or maybe just slightly out of it, but very much competitive, explosive, strong, thick set. Didn't look lean, did he? Like the Tony Bellew fight in the rematch, he kind of looked skinny in some ways. He was thick set, strong, explosive, looked very powerful when he sparring. He was sparring with Deontay Wilder and handling Wilder comfortably in the YouTube clips that I've seen. And he had... The key thing, Adam Booth in his corner, who just knew how to get the best out of David Hay, was tactically spot on, and no doubt had studied Fury closely. He'd even admitted to it before. He knew what to expect from Fury, although Fury in many ways is expect the unexpected as he's proven before time and time again. So how would it have gone down? Well, it's, it's interesting to say that David Hay would have just exploded on Fury's chin early, called him, knocked him out, especially the young, kind of egotistical Fury uh, that was probably going to fight defensively um, and, you know, kind of use the outside of the ring, which isn't a great tactic against Hay. I think, as Tony Bellew has approved, all right, past, um, past prime, Hay, but still effective, and Klitschko, to his credit, proved to be Hay, you almost have to put it on him. You have to sort of back him up, pressurise him, make him fight at a pace that he's not used to. If you watch Hay, and I've been a big fan of Hay uh, throughout his years, and the same with George Groves, they, they are sniper fighters, aren't they? They like to fight at a slow, deliberate pace. Their punch output isn't particularly high in the fight. Um, so, for instance, Hay will kind of lean off that back foot and almost cock himself. Um, and he'll almost go, sometimes he'll go up to a minute without throwing a punch. And then suddenly, boom, he explodes. He's an explosive fighter in short spells. Now, if you allow him to do that, if you allow him to get into a rhythm and fight his pace, like someone like Macaroni did, 
then you're in trouble. Um, you know, because he's got all the time in the world to set up. But if you force the pace on him, if you're forcing him to throw punch, a bit like Cole Thompson did, Klitschko did, Bellew did, even at some point, Chisora did. If you put it on him, he doesn't like it because he's having to throw more punches than he's normally used to. Um, like I say, he's quite a, a fixed muscle mass fighter. So he could have gassed out. He would have gassed out. If Fury would have leaned on him uh, and fought aggressively, I think Fury could have caused him all kinds of trouble. I don't think Fury at that stage, though, and I might have been wrong, but I don't think so. And Peter Fury, who, let's have it right, is a, is a negative trainer in many respects. He doesn't force his fighters to fight aggressively. I think if Fury would have kind of tried to bamboozle Hay, it could have been to his detriment because Hay would have had time to control the scent in the ring, to load up and explode on Fury's chin. And I don't care what they say. David Hay, Prime Hay, exploded onto the chin. It's good night, Vienna. Um, so it'd been very interesting. I can see how some people would have thought, no, 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 no. What would have happened, because he, he showed it two years after, is Fury would have done what he did to Klitschko. Just basically bamboozle Hay. Um, keep out of range, keep out of distance, jab his head off, tie him up inside, lean on him, um, and just mix it up between orthodox and southpaw, and just gas Hay out. Clever movement. And I can see that, but I also can see David Haig landing on, on Fury's chin. Um, so it really was a pick and fight. At that stage, Fury hadn't had any really big fights. You know, he hadn't fought the Klitschkos, the Wilders at this point. His biggest fight was against that Derek Chisora for the British title. That was his level at that point. Steve Cunningham, you could say, but he was well past his prime and a cruiserweight. So for me, I think the most competitive fight you've got, and the biggest win was Chisora. Hay was levels above that, as he showed when he sparked out Chisora in the fight before taking on Fury. So it was a big jump up for Fury. The limelight was on him. His first pay-per-view event Hay had been there and done that. He'd fought many big fights. He had the experience. He also had, in my view, the best trainer going, Adam Booth. So who would my money been on? I believe Hay. I, I believe he'd have been uncomfortable at times, but I think he would have detonated on Fury's chin around five or six, and I think he gets Fury out of there. I really do, at that point in time. I think like Chisora fight, um, Hay would have been under the cosh at times, but I think he had enough young, spring, vibrant energy and power in him to, to really hit and hurt Fury. Now, people go on about Fury's iron chin. It's, it's a good chin. There's no question about it. He's a big man. Um, but it would have been, he wouldn't have been 19 stone back in 2013. He would have probably come in about 17 and a half. He looked lean, didn't he, when training? So I don't think his chin would have held up against David Hay's massive right-hand punch. I think Hay would have also learned a big lesson fighting a big man against Klitschko, where he was defensive, he kind of held off. I think he'd have been more aggressive. He'd have been more of a headhunter. I think um, uh, Booth would have studied Fury, the fact that he does lean back. I think Hay would have timed him leaning back and caught him with a huge right hand. And I think it would have been good night Vienna. I think Hay would have beaten a 2000 Tyson Fury around the five or six mark via KO. Um, of course, Fury, uh, with lion heart that he is, would have got up from the first knockdown. I don't think he would have got up from the second knockdown. Hay proved against Chisora what a ruthless finisher he is. He'd have been all over Fury. I think Fury would have tied him up. Um, and tried to wear him down, but I think eventually Hay, probably in the same round, would have caught him again and hurt him, hit him, and ref jumps in. I think Fury gets up again, but the ref waves it off. That's how I see this fight. I don't think the experience was there. I don't think the right tactics were there. Although I think Fury would have frustrated Hay at times, I think Hay would have learned his lesson from Klitschko fight. I think he was hungry for this win. I think experience, the explosive power of Hay, and the lack of concentration at this time. Fury around this time was known for switching off in fights. 
You know, he'd have two really good rounds followed by two appalling rounds. And I think that would have come back to bite him in the backside against Hay. I'm going for a Hay KO. After roughing some awkward moments, especially with, I believe, the crowd would have been on Fury's side, and that would have buoyed Fury. But I have to say, Hay via KO win. I know some of you will disagree. Some of you will say that Fury would have beaten Hay at any stage of his career. I disagree. 2019-2020 Fury, yes. I don't believe 2013 Fury would have. But he's shown massive improvement. He's got better and better and better since then. And obviously, Hay was on the decline after that shoulder injury occurred in late 2013. Let me know what you guys think. I'm interested to hear, though. It was a super fight that never happened. It would have been a big pay-per-view event. It would have been a sellout. And it might have just marked, wouldn't it, the end, possibly, of Tyson Fury before he went on to achieve greatness. Who knows what would have happened if he'd have fought and lost and lost via KO to David Hay. Would he be as great as he is now? It's 50-50, isn't it? It's up for debate, but it's all hearsay. The bottom line is he went on to be a fantastic fighter with a fantastic career, and he still is. So good luck to the man, but that's my thoughts. Want to know and yours. Drop my, me a line on my YouTube, the McGonagall Boxing Podcast, uh, my Instagram, the McGonagall Boxing Podcast, Facebook, Touch Clubs Boxing. And uh, if you like the channel, please like, subscribe, because we're going to try and do some daily videos, more on boxing chat, and I be, will be with you very soon again to talk some more current affairs tomorrow in the world of boxing. All right, guys, I'm out. I'll catch you soon. All right, bye.